Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's episode 115 of the Audible Farm podcast, and this episode is brought to you by Couchtown Coffee. Couchtown Coffee is roasted right here in Iowa. That's pretty cool. You know what else is cool? It's roasted especially for the order that is made. So if you make an order, they get the order and then roast coffee specifically for you and then ship it to you. That's awesome. What else is awesome? You can save 20%. All you got to do is make an order at couchtowncoffee.com. Find a coffee you like, and when you do make an order, let them know Audible Farm sent you. Enter the code word Audible Farm, and you'll save 20%. Why? Because Couchtown Coffee is awesome. Thanks, Couchtown. This episode, I'm sitting down with Carson Steeb. Carson is a friend of mine that I met at some jam nights, and uh, it's pretty cool. I didn't realize uh, she could sing until she went up and started singing, and then I was like, oh, holy cow, she can sing well. And then, you know, just being at jam nights here and there, I found out that, you know, she can kind of play the drums. Um, and when I say kind of, I mean better than me, and that's pretty wild because... I'm I'm really, really trying, and she just like sat behind him for the first time, and I was like, whoa, this kind of makes sense. So we talk a little bit about that, but we also talk about uh, her singing. She's really good at singing, and she sang pretty much all her life, and uh, her whole family sang. We're, we talk about all this kind of stuff, uh, doing karaoke, singing along at jam nights, singing with other people at shows. It's really kind of cool, her story, and I figured, why not sit down and talk with her about it? So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm sitting down talking with Carson Steve. She's a local singer in the northern iowa area it's the audible farm podcast with your host peter stockdale i'm sitting down today with carson steeb pronounced it right it's steeb for anybody wondering this uh I don't know. I don't know why I'm always so weirded out by people's last names, but like, I guess if you're trying to do something official like this, it's like I gotta get this right. Oh yeah. And I've yeah, even pronounced I've even pronounced people's names wrong, or even called them the wrong name. That's happened twice. <laughs> but what, on your show. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was no. yeah, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Carson, you sing. That's how I like first met you. I guess I could say like uh, I saw you at a jam night. You were singing with some people, and they were playing mm-hmm. a tune. And I was like, oh, this is really crazy. I didn't I didn't know you sang. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't. You know, I don't, I guess anybody that goes to a jam night, I guess if it's your first one, you don't know the area. It's like, I don't know anybody, but a lot of people know you as a singer. How did, how did you first know you could sing? Cause I, um, admittedly on the podcast a few times, I'm not a great singer. I'm not like horrible, but I'm not like mm. not good. Not. I've heard you sing. You're, you're nice. Yeah. It's okay. It's good with the five note range I have, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's really fun to hear like people who are, you know, have a, a bigger range or can like really go for the high notes or you can tell they have some passion for it in their voice like mm-hmm. how did you figure that out like uh, it, genetics genetics like, yeah <laughs> you just like everybody singing around the house or yeah my sister and brother and um mom and aunt, a bunch of our family members are like really good singers do they sing in like uh community choruses or anything like no, that they or they just, just sang around like whenever we hang out and then like growing up my brother and sister we're just always in chorus stuff, so. That's super cool. I can't say I ever once heard anyone in my family on either side uh, sing. I can say one person, one one person, like, within my, like, Holy close crap. family reach had anything to do with music, and, and uh, he played guitar and sang. But other than that, nobody else did anything. I never once heard my mom or dad sing stuff unless they were just kind of goofing around, so. Oh, that's so weird you to know, me. <laughs> I mean, there was never the sound of, like, somebody singing in the shower at my house where you're just like, oh, somebody's belting it out in there, like, <laughs> But I mean, I never heard any of that. And I don't know. It's just yeah, it maybe a little nice. bit different. So no, that's fine. So, but did you like just go on like car rides with them and just like start singing along with them, or did like when did you figure out like oh I can actually do this too, or was it was it never a thought that like oh this isn't possible because everyone around you was already doing it? Um, no, I guess we all just knew that we sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's so it crazy. Sounds bad, but um, so being in chorus and everything that's really where i found out that i'm also pretty good Mm -hmm. because i don't know just having an older brother and sister they were always really good it's like ah yeah yeah it's they uh they almost expect you to be good and just put you in the place where it's like uh you know sink or swim kind of deal i mean that is kind of the the thing of being the younger sibling though Mm -hmm. um i had an older sister that was very good at 
uh, like everything she did. So yeah. it was like kind of just like everything I tried. It was just like, oh, your sister's great at this, you uh, know. But you know, for the most part, it <laughs> like you said, it translates pretty well. Like, yeah. you, you know, your sister's good at this thingy. Well, yeah, I'm all right at it too, you know. And yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I wonder if some of that just comes with like the sibling thing, where like if my siblings can do this, I can probably do this. Or oh, probably. If, you know. Yeah. It's always a challenge with each other. Yeah. So. so you sang like all through school. I mean, everybody does the whole like. The, Basically, yeah. They have like the music class where everybody sings hot cross buns or whatever, you know, all through like first through like fifth grade and stuff. And <laughs> Yes, but, yes. But then it gets to the point Mandatory. where. Mandatory. Yeah. Then it gets to the point where it's a choice. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Like middle school or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was always my go-to, like my extracurricular yes. activity. Yes. <laughs> Um, was always vocal and choir. And then I also did show choir, which was for like before school and after school and, um, competitions yeah or whatever there's um okay because I was not good at singing, I sang in like seventh grade chorus and that was about, about it. Um, uh, ironically I had a teacher say like, some people don't have the ability to sing and that might be you. Um, oh my God. And, and I know it's like kind of mean, but like at the time <sighs> It's true. I was like pretty tone deaf. I was just, bah, you know, just making noise, like yeah. just filling up wrong notes. But and, mm-hmm. and I get it. So like I didn't sing anymore. So like by the time we got to high school and everyone's like, oh, there's like 14 different choirs you can be in or 14 different styles of like, you know, it's not, not that many. Where did you go to school Not at? that many. But, oh, I was but, like, what? But you get, my, you get my gist though where it's just like, well, you can be, you know, you could be in the musical or you could be in yeah. like the regular show choir or they yeah. have like... Just choir. Just regular, like standing there with robes on choir. I mean, there yeah. were so many different like styles of singing mm-hmm. you could do. Um, some involved moving and things like that, um, <laughs> which I always thought was pretty wild. Like, I'm not a good dancer either. Um, not even like people, I don't know. I'm just not, that's just not what I do very well. So like the fact that people can like dance well, I'm just like, oh, this is cool. And then if they're like sing well, I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then if they do the two at the same time, I'm like, what is, no. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's almost impossible. just too much. Like this is crazy. How are you doing this? <laughs> No, that was the funnest thing in high school, I think. Really? Show choir, yeah. I even got I got in the high school show choir when I was in eighth grade. Cool. Yeah. So I mean they it was like they just needed extra sopranos, but I was all for it. Yeah. Um and so yeah, I did that throughout my all of my high school career. Um going to competitions. Not very far away, but it was always a lot of fun. And mm. that that we would meet at like five AM before school. Oof. And Oof. um like when it was taught by Mrs. Langstaff, um, yeah. So it was it was a lot of hard work, and we yeah. we took it pretty seriously. But it was still a lot of fun. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh my gosh, I remember like you know I was in sports, so I remember some of the sports you'd have to come in early and do stuff or like mm-hmm. weight lift before or whatever. And it's you know it takes a lot of dedication. So I'm not like foreign to that concept, but like I guess you know. It's not like people, they just like, all right, you guys go out here and do this awesome dance number. And they just like all have it choreographed in their head and they just kick ass from the start. No. I mean, it takes it, a lot of work. A lot of practice. <laughs> a lot, a lot of, of practice. <laughs> you know, everybody got to step in time. And then you're just like, you're stepping in time, but you're flat. And, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh. I could just see, like, it would just be a never-ending cycle of things to try to perfect. Um, oh, yeah. So, like, when you graduate from high school and there's no more, like, I mean, like, there are a couple, like, community chorus type things. But there's mm-hmm. no more, like structured organized like these are the things you have to do during the day you have to have like a job and stuff but like how do you bridge the gap from having all this awesome stuff to do while you're singing to all of a sudden like there's nothing available to you like did you keep singing at places or did you like show up i know that like some bars have karaoke and things Mm -hmm. like that but also when you graduate high school there's like a tiny gap where it's like you can't really get into bars sort of um sometimes they'll allow you as a as a uh, performer as long as it's before a certain time and mm-hmm. certain towns so but how did you like uh end up bridging that gap uh i really didn't so when i went to college i didn't do any extra things so i was kind of out of music for a while um so you went to call co- i mean you went to college but didn't do any music like mm-hmm. any singing no. i mean granted it was just straight college business is ex- classes yeah but college is expensive like some of those are slightly free like some of the things you can do in college like if you want to be in the play and things like that it just takes a lot of your time but like otherwise if you want to take like lessons or classes and things that costs money though too Mm -hmm. and I mean it's not cheap you know yeah so so I was I was out of music for two years there and then I really didn't start singing 
karaoke until I was probably 21, I think. I think. And then that's when I started doing, like, competitions. Oh, cool. So what other, kind of what kind of competitions like uh, uh, karaoke competitions around like just around this area or, or um, where at? One was hosted here in Fort Dodge, and then the other couple that I did was the Road to Tree Town Festival. Oh, cool! Karaoke competition. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things I think about some people that can sing karaoke is it's like, man, if this person just had like a live band behind them doing stuff, like it's different. I mean, it is a little bit different, <laughs> but it's still it's like this would be this would be you know amazing there's a couple oh, yeah but also and i don't want to put people down at karaoke because i can't sing i don't i don't sing karaoke because <laughs> i can't sing but you know some people at karaoke when it's not a competition it's like oh this person's just up there for fun and um, yeah and that and that's nice that's cool too yeah for I, sure i wish i had the confidence that's the one thing i, I wish I, everyone had the confidence to do that yeah because yeah. it's it's a lot of fun like i i really i'm really happy for people that when they get up and do karaoke and it's like they're literally there to just have fun it's like good for you like yeah. who cares so that's, yeah that's probably actually what aggravates me more is the fact that they're enjoying themselves and it's like if i was doing that i would not be enjoying myself and I'm, <laughs> I'm like mad about that actually <laughs> you're like i just want to have fun <laughs> I, yeah and it's, i can't sing and it's not fun for me so i don't know i don't know i have to be really good at it or nothing at all no um but it's kind of crazy that you like went to these karaoke competitions. Did you ever mm -hmm. think that you would get in a situation where you'd have like a band behind you or anything like that? Or um, I uh, would it, uh, let's see. I hoped at like one point for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I never did that really until I sang. I started singing with Jeremy. Oh, that's cool. Really? Yeah. Otherwise, I would sing at church. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. That's, <laughs> but... actually, that's actually where I got my start playing guitar. So I, really? Yeah, nice. Yeah. So I'd like go to church and they would just like pick up a guitar and play and yeah. stand in the corner and, you know. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. And it's great. And I think that's another great place for people to start. If you go to church. Mm -hmm. Get some confidence. It's a great place to go. Yeah. People love hearing what you've got going on. And mm -hmm. for the most part, people are super nice at churches. For the so, most part, yeah. Yeah. At least your face and stuff. No, I'm not trying to be mean, but like, <laughs> no. A little jokey. If, but... if you have a good church. Yeah, that's very true though too. If you have a supportive group of people there, mm -hmm. they're gonna love what you have going on. I, you know, and that just blows my mind. I think some of it probably has to do with the fact that like everyone sang. I mean, obviously you're talented, but everyone sang around you growing up and and enjoyed that type of thing. So it just kind of lent itself to you going out there and having the confidence to do it publicly afterwards. You know? Yeah. I mean, I I didn't um, voluntarily sing by myself like my first solo that I chose was my senior year in high school otherwise I hadn't sang by myself except like in a choir oh wow so I didn't sing a solo until I was 18 that's crazy <laughs> so do you sing a solo like in the middle of a song or just go out there and sing all by yourself with no one else I actually you? my first solo that I sang at high school was the last concert of my senior year um I sang House of the Rising Sun cool the yes one that I always sing yes and I've heard you sing that song and it's very good you know and that's that's one of those things where it's like that's a song that starts out uh slightly basic and then the, as it builds it has so much passion mm -hmm. that builds up into it and that's something that you Favorite can't I don't think songs. you can I don't think you can fake that you know there's no mm -hmm. way to like really fake that you have to like feel it and put it in there um and you can't just like go out there and just be like you know just do it and just be like meh <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, just like yeah <laughs> you can't just meh like I and some of that is something I think a lot of people don't um look at when they think of singing because like i've tried to analyze it so much it's so much more than just like talking with notes you actually have to have like some sort of like yeah to to actually like i feel be a good singer yeah you would have to feel the music or the things that you're singing mm -hmm. otherwise if you go out there and just meh it's like meh that was nice yeah thank uh, you <laughs> i mean like if you lack dynamics or things like that or mm -hmm. you know the ability to uh portray something bigger than just the words you're saying out loud you yeah. know and that might, you know, that might probably also be another reason I lack, uh, lack my singing capabilities. Cause I just sing like blues kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> like a lot of that yeah, is just can, like, you can feel that. Yeah, totally. It's like one, one direction. Usually it's just like, I'm blue, not Eiffel 65. I'm blue, but, <laughs> um, I'm blue, you know? Um, so, and I can, I can pretty much, you know, do that easily because it's, it's, I think that's something everyone can tap into at one point in their life. It's like the blues could have probably spoken to somebody, you know, at one point in their life. Yeah. Um, but you, I, I saw you singing at a jam night. I saw you singing house of the rising sun. Mm -hmm. Um, Jeremy was playing some guitar to that. And you know, that was something I thought was pretty cool. Have you guys ever thought about like trying to do a set as a duet 
for the two of you or is there anything kind of like that or or maybe even if uh since he's already got so much on his plate already like maybe you go with somebody else and do a kind of thing like a singer songwriter duet type of deal or anything any aspirations <laughs> to do that like uh um because I know, I know you were trying to take some guitar lessons for a while and yeah. and bridge the gap between those two, which is very difficult um, mm. in itself. But it was very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did that go? How did it all go when you were taking guitar lessons? Um, I just would get mad that I couldn't do it. <laughs> That's probably the one thing I always thought that was like the hardest when I first started learning guitar was it's like I see what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's not that that's the issue. The issue is I can't move make, yeah make the and fingers push them in the place fast enough yeah. and switch them <laughs> yeah and i it was and jeremy kept telling me that it's it's practice like he practices every day so and i just get i just get so mad so quick and i'm like i can't even do this flip it yeah, yeah flip, flip, <laughs> flip the table the guitar. yep <laughs> no more monopoly no more guitar no, yeah, we're done with this no, I totally get that. Um, when I first started giving guitar lessons, I gave guitar lessons to people who were um, beginners and had never really played before. Mm -hmm. So, like, I had to, like, put myself in their mindset. And it's not like, I mean, if we were putting people on a pedestal, I, you know, Jeremy has more talent than I do. But I also, like, think about it's been a long time since I first picked an instrument up and was like, oh, this is, fo this is so foreign. And the closest thing I could come in my mind to be like, what if I put a guitar in my hand left-handed? And mm -hmm. I was like, because I know what everything's supposed to be. So I picked up a left-handed guitar and it's like, we'll play a C chord. And, you know, I could do that with my eyes closed mm -hmm. on any scale of a guitar normally. But when I put it in my hand left-handed, it was just like, this is so weird. <laughs> this is yeah. so weird. And it's like, that's probably how everyone feels when they pick this thing up. Because that, you know, like I said, it's been like 15 years since that was the first time I picked a guitar mm -hmm. up. So I had to remember what it was like. And it's so foreign. I mean... To not play a stringed instrument than to try to start. Yeah. Yep. I, mean, I, I have trouble pushing them down hard enough. <laughs> is it? Uh, I mean, some of that's the finger strength, though, too. Uh, like Jeremy said, it just comes down to, like, just doing it over and over yep. and over and over again. Yeah. And um, a friend of mine once told me that, like, music comes down to who is okay with being bored the longest. And that's how talented you are. Because it's just, like, <laughs> you have to monotonously practice this stuff that's so, yeah. like... Play a D chord 4,000 times before you you know, you can finally switch to it okay. And it's like, I don't want to do that, you know, that many times. And, you know, if people That's are okay true. with it. There yeah. there you go. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Some of it also comes down to, like, the desire. If that's, like, the only thing you focus on and this is the one thing you want to do, you can definitely do it, I think. For sure. But, um, and it's not like you can't play instruments either, though, too. Because, I, like, I saw you sit behind a drum set at a jam night. <laughs> and I was just... <laughs> I was like, I didn't know you could play drums. And you're like, I can't. And it's like, you're better than me. Like, don't tell me that. And I... Well, I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally true. And I have a drum set at my house at my disposal. Do you yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's so much better than fun. I am. It's so funny. Like, I got up there. I was just like, oh, this is insane. Because I was, I was standing outside with some people. And I was like, who's playing drums? Because usually the people <laughs> that play drums... They're all they're all out here. They're they're better. They're a lot better. No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of blew my mind. You like poke your head inside the door, like what is this? I'm going inside now to watch this. Yeah, um, I think when you saw me, that was like the second time I played drums. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should switch to be a drummer singer. I well, I would I would love to be a drummer singer. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. That I would freaking love that. That'd the, be awesome. But the, I don't have a drum set. The world needs more drummer singers. You should, uh, right? sw next time you swing up to a jam night, I expect you to sit behind the drums and, uh, and sing. And sing. Oof, well, I have to w w work on that. For a little uh, bit. I mean, what if, what if you could <laughs> attempt to do like a house of the rising sun? Cause it doesn't have like an insane drum beat to <laughs> it, you know? Um, I'm going to practice with my tambourine first. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. And that's where it starts. I'll probably like start singing and then just like lose the beat completely. No, it's gonna be gr it's gonna be great. This oh, is gonna man. be so cool. <laughs> I mean, if, if you were that good at the drums to start out with, I mean, that's the other thing. I just think is uh, some of it just has to be with if you try a little bit of everything. Eventually, you're just like, I'm actually like weirdly good at this without 
you know, any like specific lessons for yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Kind of mm-hmm. like you with singing. It was just like, here's, I'm singing now. And it's like, I'm good at this. And like, <laughs> nobody had to sit down and be like, these are notes and this is what you have to sing. And they're this far apart. And, and it's like, you're flat on this, like sing higher. There's nobody, no nuns slapping your wrists, you know, like <laughs> yeah. whatever, you know. happen all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, out at Manson, you know. Oh yeah. Crazy school out no <laughs> super abusive. <Yeah. laughs> pause kidding. pause not. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get like uh we already talked about like, getting nervous playing live, but like when you played it when you sang in high school at the first time ever, you were I'm assuming you were nervous. Oh yeah. Going to your first karaoke, were you uh, nervous to sing at a karaoke in front of a whole pile of people you'd never even whole pile. Um <laughs> I mean that's what I always think is weird. You go into a bar and it's just like it has regular clientele plus people that are there maybe just because music's there or karaoke's there and then maybe some stragglers. And then it's just like none of these people are my friends. I, I don't mind. Yeah. I have even met some of these people, you yeah. know? Um, actually, hmm. so I would I would somewhat sing karaoke like with some family members at family reunions. Mm-hmm. So it, it was fine there because it was my family. But the first time I sang kar- karaoke was... Um, senior year in high school we went on a florida trip and i was like i don't know any of these people at this hotel except for like my classmates and i'm like i'm gonna sing adele oh cool and then um i was terrified (laughs) (laughs) it didn't sound the greatest you know um and then yeah i didn't sing until later because i couldn't go anywhere because i wasn't 21 i always thought it was crazy like when you first try something like the first time I got on guitar and played at a jam night, like the first time, like you're so nervous oh, you and everything. Terrified? Yeah, and it's like everything's so uh, basic at the beginning, and you're like, let's just keep it normal and keep it simple. Yeah. And then usually by the end of the song, you're so comfortable, you're like, oh, well, I'm almost mad this was over. Like the whole time it started, like I was just like, I can't wait till the end of this. Is you know, it's the end is only yeah. this far away. The light is right there at the end of the tunnel. I'm I'm anticipating. I'm waiting for it. And then by the time it's like. Oh man, the song's the song's almost over. I was just getting going. Like, did you feel like yeah. that at um, your first karaoke? Like, I want to get up there and do another one. Actually, nope, nope, nope. I was done. <laughs> done. <laughs> I was done. I was like, I sang it. I did it. No more. <laughs> and then I and then I did my solo at my last concert, and I literally left before the concert was like fully done, and so that no one could yeah say anything to yeah, me so i just you. up and left oh, man. yeah i was like i did it that's it that's all i cared <laughs> that's that's pretty funny uh i'm usually like that at public events too though it's just like i'm gonna scoot out just before everyone yeah. else or like hide while everyone leaves and then scoot out you know and mm-hmm. um you know some of that just comes down to like the nerves of not knowing if everyone really is gonna like it or like people are just gonna be like it's great even if they don't like it you know and then you're like i don't know who's being honest or who's not yeah. or like you know, I don't know what the the thought process is of that for me. Um, some of it's just being like, I don't want someone to be up, come up to me and be like, this sucked. <laughs> like, that's probably what would be worse. But honestly, I don't think anyone's ever done that. I know? guess I just, I feel, I feel a bit more like mean now because I think it's just the conversation. Like, I don't want to have to have to have the conversation. <laughs> well, it is true, though. Like, if you play guitar inevitably in a band, you know, like someone's going to come up to you afterwards and be like, great set, man. And it's just like, what do you say? You know? thank you yeah yeah, yeah mm-hmm. but yeah but then yeah, and it's like i don't know i mean it's really appreciative i i love it when people say things like that and it's nice but it's yeah. still like thanks mm-hmm. you know <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say like i really appreciate it thanks for coming you know that's probably like you know i really you know thank you for showing up and, and enjoying it i yeah i, I, don't I guess but I, yeah but it's it's still awkward that's yeah. how i feel i feel like it's an awkward one of those yeah awkward it's an awkward conversation awkward. i think some of it has to do with like that would be the business end of like the you know transaction i guess um so uh imagine like uh i i worked at a job where i, I worked at a retail establishment and i cut meat for a living for a while so cutting meat was like easy the awkward part was interacting with people sometimes yeah and so like for you the singing was easy but the interacting with people is the part where you're just like this is kind of weird you know like yeah because you know you don't know what you're going to get when somebody interacts with you or they could have an odd request or you know just come up yeah. and be like that was the greatest thing i've ever seen in my life and i would just be like ah, like <laughs> freaking out like <laughs> Don't touch me! And just run away. <laughs> I'm not used to this. <laughs> Don't touch me. Yeah. Nobody praised me when I was young. This is why this is so <laughs> weird. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't tell my mom I said that. Childhood issues. <laughs> oh man. We're all scarred. 
So you uh, you come to jam nights sometimes in Barnum. Did you ever? Yeah. Did you ever make it out to Patty's Pub to any of those jams? To I sing? did. Yeah. Um. So I started bartending in Barnum, and that's when I figured out the jam nights. That's where I met everyone that yep. I hang out with now. Yeah. Um. And then Jeremy told me that he was doing some jam nights out at Patty's, and so I got to like the last four or like four of them that was like pretty much all i did too yeah it was i I, that was freaking awesome oh man i couldn't believe it they were such a blast i was glad to be a guitarist at those jam nights and not a Mm. bassist because there was only (laughs) like two bassists at any jam night like ever so you'd end up playing like three hours in the night but but if you were a guitarist it's like well there's 50 guitarists here so you get three songs just go up there and murder it you know and that was like some of the funnest things ever um you know, I got to be a host musician at one, which was oh, like, nice. you know, you start out and you play six or seven or eight songs and then you, then you start swapping in and out. Yeah. And if, if you run out of musicians, hop back up there, you know? Yeah. And that was really cool. Cause like, it was right when I first started and Jeremy gave me the opportunity to do one oh, of those. Cool. And I can't believe that. Um, I mean, the, I, I, the impression that I remember you from is at the Barnum jams and I, I can't believe our paths didn't cross or maybe I showed up too late to, uh, some of the jams at patties but i also recall like i went i was uh like i said a host musician musician at one and most of the other ones mm-hmm. i went to it was like really late at night because i was in school and stuff so if i'd mm-hmm. finish my homework on time and things it was just like well it's 11 i bet the jam night's still going on yeah and so you'd like cruise out there and just hope someone was still there and a lot of times you'd sneak in the back and just be like if nobody says anything to me it's cool i'll just hang out here <laughs> yeah. and i don't have to play and then scoot out oh uh, yeah and jeremy sees everybody you know yes he does <laughs> he makes yeah. he he has the <laughs> nicest way of inviting people up to do things and i think that's some of his charm as a musician <laughs> <laughs> just getting people to do things so is, is that how he got you to go on stage and sing the first time or was that something you guys decided together or did you um, were you just kind of like farting around and he's playing a song and you started to sing along with it and well, he was like this is great or no one time we got hired for a car show and i was only known to sing karaoke so at this car show i was going to sing karaoke Mm -hmm. um and he was hired to play for this other girl and then sing another song or something and uh so we were asked if we could learn a song together and so i sent him a couple songs we didn't get that opportunity before the um event Mm -hmm. uh but we still worked up some of the songs, and then I would just sing with him at jam night. That cool. Literally the first. That's how we got to singing. I think <laughs> I think that's how some of it starts, though. Is just like somebody throwing the intrigue out there is like, a, oh, you can play guitar really well, and you can sing really well, and you're doing this thing at this event together. Uh, maybe not together, but like you're at this event thing. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you guys should do something together though. Just, just letting you know, or like yeah. maybe do it for another time for another event. And we, we were going to get hired for the next event, but I couldn't make it or something, but mm-hmm. we did work on a few songs and, um, we're still working on a few more or. Do you guys think you're going to make a this is the duet question we're coming back to it i <laughs> think you're gonna end up doing like mini shows around uh you know like um filling up a two-hour time slot or uh eventually maybe i think i'm just focused on like just a a bonus let's say mm-hmm. <laughs> or a feature yeah so um because we know we know a few songs and we're working on like I think like three more, but, um, it's not like super priority. Yeah. I suppose. So it's not even something like on the horizon for you to be like, I think we should aim for this or it's not. Um, if I, if I brought it up for sure, he would probably put the time into it. So it's, it's basically up to me. I just have to like get the foot out of my ass and yeah, get going. Some of it is like the desire to do it though, too. Cause like, um, I mean, as far as finding a musician to come along with you on a musician's journey that is like what we could call a band, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, at the current moment, Three Finger Betty, at the moment we're recording this, Three Finger Betty, my, the band I'm in is looking for a bassist, you know. So it's, I know a bazillion bassists, but it's tough to find the right person that's willing oh, to yeah. do this thing. Plus, they've got to put extra time in at the start because they have to do all this stuff. And, you mm-hmm. know, this could be songs you already sing and Jeremy doesn't know how to play on guitar. So yeah. it's 
you know, it's really probably more work for him to do, even though it's, you know, he's good enough at guitar. He I was going to say, he it, 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 it doesn't take him long. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take him long to uh, <laughs> figure out a song oh, that, at all. That bastard. And then, <laughs> he's, and then he's always like, um, I don't, like, I have to figure out how I want it. And so he'll, like, switch it, but it's still the song, mm-hmm. you know? So, because he won't, I don't think he'll play a cover, like, specifically like the song. So he's like, I got to figure out what I want to do. And I'm like, okay. And so he's just like, playing around with the song mm-hmm. that he learned just like 20 minutes ago yeah <laughs> it's wild it is wild i think that's that's really cool though is to have you know that capability or to have somebody that um it, you know is willing to sit next to you and and play along with yeah. you and things like that it is very awesome um, it's nice i wish i had the capability to like you know lend that to somebody um not that i'm not talented enough but it would take me a lot more work than it would take him <laughs> unfortunately i don't have the time no um that's really cool though. Like I think that is probably something I, you know, I've, I've thought to myself a lot, like how come you don't sing more or sing like in a band or, or something along those lines, but it also comes down to, I, I did audition for a band. I just wasn't picked, oh, <laughs> bummer. but otherwise, um, if I know if I do want to sing, he'll always let me come and sing and learn more songs. And mm-hmm. if I did want to ask if I could, fill up like half of a like an hour out of a two-hour show with him and i bet it would be fine but, mm-hmm. um yeah so it's possibility future if, that's cool if he'd be up for it have you have you ever written any songs um or like or have you ever written down stuff that you're like this could be a song there's no music to I mean, it I, but... yeah i've written poems yeah so. oh i guess that would be essentially what they would be without <laughs> you know Notes. but yeah have you ever tried to like sit down with jeremy and write a song together or no or have you ever like sat down with a keyboard and done the whole like this note and this note? I, I tried that one time um, and I was going to write a song and then I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> it's so tough. It's not easy. I yeah, I'm terrible with it. I'm, I'm fine with writing poems and that's cool, mm-hmm. but I've never actually written a song. Any desire to do that? Let me ask you that. Uh, if I have the talent too then mm-hmm. for sure yeah that'd be fun what but, if i mean what if you just co-wrote it with somebody else i mean even if it wasn't you know i think that'd be fun yeah for sure yeah hmm. that sounds pretty fun i wish you know I, I wish there was more collaborations going on obviously i get like every musician i know and i mean anybody who has anything to do with music full-time job regular job you got stuff going on you got your schedules yeah. every, every schedule is different some people have family some people have kids so it's not easy to just be like oh collaborate with everybody and all yeah. your free time spend all your free time on this you know and that's probably the one thing that i forget quite often mostly because i just do this podcast when i talk to people i'm like just everybody's just, you gotta make music videos <laughs> and then when's your next <laughs> album coming out come on and i'm just like yeah, I don't. all right i'm gonna edit my video <laughs> 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 no, I think that'd be super cool to see you out there, though. Like, um, I get that you're not like forcing the issue to be like, I want to be in a band. Someone, you know, we gotta find somebody that's looking. You're not like mm-hmm. hunt, scouring Craigslist for people looking for a female singer, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, it's still something that you would entertain the idea of, and I think it would go over really well here in this area. Yeah, I think if if I had an offer to be in a band, I I would probably for sure work at it. Yeah. So. That's really cool. So if anybody wants a female singer in a band, that's, you know, listening to this, boom, right there. That's what we're talking about. <clears throat> so I think I've covered, for the most part, most of what I've got on here. Unfortunately, I think we how much time we got recorded. We only got a half an hour in. This is unfortunate. So is there anything that, um, let me see here, anything musical that is like super poignant to you right now anything uh, we were talking about playing guitar trying to learn guitar um the difficulties of that do you did you end up like buying a guitar do you still have one is it still something you're thinking about or is it something like uh well sometimes i look at my like training book <laughs> and uh, is that the book i tipped over earlier oh it is yeah it was oh yeah. i mean it's it's my with, lesson book it's right over here <laughs> <laughs> it's only on like page three <laughs> well but so- um no so for an early birthday present for jeremy i had bought him another acoustic guitar mm-hmm. so then he had two so just whenever he would normally take his one of them and so i would sit here and practice with the other oh cool so they were just 
I just use Jeremy's guitars. Well, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's also really nice of him to, to let you use one, even yeah. though you bought it for him, but still, you know. Like, it is. It's his. Yeah, it is his. It's te- <laughs> technically, it's his. What do, what do you think the hardest part about learning the guitar is then? Let me ask you that. Um, oh. As opposed to like any other instrument that you've picked up and tried. Because, I mean, like drums, it's drums seem to come semi-natural to you. It's just like, oh, you kick it and then you smack it and then there's cymbals. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Like, yeah. So Honestly, like the hardest part, because, like, I would also play some keyboard, like, I would try. Um, it, it's literally just the finger strength for me. Like, I have weak fingers, and I just can't push down the freaking strings. So it's just the strength compared to the other well, instruments. What about getting a, like, set of guitar, like a guitar with set up with, like, lighter strings on it or something like that? So oh, my it gosh, like is slightly that a thing? Easier to, slightly easier to push down, yeah. Is it, that's a thing? That's totally a thing. I would try that out. Or um, have you tried playing an electric guitar? No, I have not. I, I would suggest trying to pick up an electric because it's e- so much easier. The strings are thinner on an electric anyways. Right. Oh. Um, Jeremy took his electric. Of course. He's got stuff to do. Gosh dang it. I think he's giving guitar oh, lessons. Oh, he is giving lessons right now. Yeah. He could have taken his acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's giving electric lessons, teaching kids to shred. Um, Probably. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're talking about Jeremy. I'll throw a plug in for you. Uh, if you're in the Fort Dodge area and anybody wants guitar lessons, hit up Jeremy over for some guitar lessons. Um, Eighth Note Music in Fort Dodge is where he's based out of, but hit him up. He does guitar lessons. Um, you know, he's and that's actually a pretty good teacher too. Uh, yeah, like I've, doing the lessons with me is freaking awesome. Like I understand what he's saying. That's the most important thing. Um, and I found that was something tough when I was giving lessons though too. Was like. How do I explain what's in my head to this person in a way that they right. will understand it? And luckily, I've watched forty-eight thousand YouTube videos, so I've I've heard people explain it like every way possible. So I'm like, oh, if you don't get it this way, then this is the way to get it. There you go. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, also, teaching people on the fly, like at playing bass at jam nights. Oh yeah. It's just like these are the three notes that we're hitting like mm-hmm. repeatedly. So if you just do this and then count to four and then switch to this and count to four. So if you break it down to the point where it's like, don't even worry about anything musically, just play this note, this note, and this note yeah. on repeat. And it's, that's the whole song. And I mean, you can take it down to that level and it's, it's a little bit easier. But yeah. I don't know. Um, piano though. Did you have like, first time you sat down behind a piano did you like uh were you, were you thinking like this is gonna be super easy or like was it something where you it's just um, like there's a million things here i don't know what the heck's going on or did so you I just never, get like a little keyboard or <laughs> i i mean we always had like toy keyboards and stuff so i was always interested and then my grandma always had a piano over at her house for a while um but i can't read music so i would just either play like a song in my head and Mm -hmm. go by the notes so it would only be like one key or whatever but then I started I was able to watch videos and how to play certain songs so I can't read music at all but if I hear a song I'll I can learn it oh cool that's awesome I've that was something that was weird about me was like I played guitar and trumpet growing up and my sister played piano and saxophone and other things Mm -hmm. but like I was just like Piano to me was just weirdly elusive. It seems so basic. It's just like, well, the flats and sharps are the black keys, and then the normal stuff is the white keys, and then when they repeat, that's the octave. And it's just super basic, but it's just like, okay, now go out there and do it. And it's like, "Ah, ah." (laughs) well, this is minor chord, flatted third, and you're just like, oh, my my brain is exploding. Hold on a second. I got to count here, you know, and um, it just blows my mind that people can play piano that's another one of those weird things to me it's just like this is just so weird yeah if i had to read the music i wouldn't know what the heck i was <laughs> doing two staffs like at the same all, time yeah all of what you're saying right now i don't understand <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh my gosh um when i actually learned music theory though i the person that taught it to me taught it to me with a piano which was oh, okay. like okay so like if you want to visual if i visualize music theory it's on a piano, which is the weirdest thing because, like, I play a guitar and I I don't think so much about music theory. I just use more, like, patterns, I guess, in my yeah. brain. So I, like, don't think about theory, even though I know if I think about it, I'm like, oh, this is how this pattern applies to theory. So, like, I would well, understand. the guitar is like the piano. I mean, kind of. Things repeat after a while and there's... I mean, the frets and stuff. Kind of. Uh... On piano, they don't know they just have like a pile of strings inside and a hammer. When you hit a key, it just hits those. Oh, no, those I strings. mean, I guess 
I don't know what I'm thinking. Of. I like the two dots are like the three black keys or oh shoot. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. You're on to something, aren't you? I don't I don't I can't figure it out. No, nah, we can pass this. No, that's totally cool. <laughs> that's that's exactly what we're talking about though with like trying to explain what you have as a concept of music in your head. Cuz like and when I when I learned uh Mary had a little lamb on piano and then I I think my sister had a guitar at one point and like I somehow saw the frets like keys and that's how I learned Mary had a little lamb on p- guitar. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, re- I, I like, think I know where you're going. With, I think <laughs> I, I know where you're going with this. I sound this. freaking nuts. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, maybe if you're just listening to this and you're like in your car, you're like, what are these people talking about? No, but I think I understand. <laughs> uh, I, I almost wish I had a keyboard and a guitar and a piece of paper with me. And I'd be like, all right, let's see if we can figure this out and do some calculus. And I'll stuff. say we have two guitars, but, but that's, no keyboard. That's un- the unfortunate thing about me, though, with like music is like I have to like analyze it down to the point where it's just like I fully understand what's going on here. And I can't just have somebody show me something neat and be like, do this. And it's like, yeah, but why? Like, huh? I have to understand <laughs> why I'm doing this. You know, it doesn't make any sense if I don't understand it. Um, and that's the one thing I think that's tough with guitar with, you Mm -hmm. know, some people's minds, like, um, like I guess me in that sense. But when it came down to like learning music theory, the person that taught me, they, they could play guitar, but I guess to them, it's easier to teach it on a piano because it's just so easy to see the flats and sharps. Mm. I mean, there's obviously the obviously one of the the black keys, you know, which is how the black keys got their name. I'm assuming, you know, Mm. I don't know. It's black keys on a piano, sad sounding flats and sharps i don't know it's my guess but anyways <laughs> don't yeah. laugh don't laugh at me over that <laughs> she's holding back her laughter at me making assumptions over here no but my like, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> no but like that's the other crazy thing though was like to think about that was uh to have a teacher explain to me how to do some of these music theory things like i get the concept of like how playing a piano goes but like you said is if somebody showed me sheet music for it yeah. I wouldn't know how to do anything on it, you know. Mm-hmm. Same with a guitar. If somebody showed me sheet music, I could figure it out. I'd have to sit and think, but Yeah. Yeah. So actually I I can read music, but I have to um sit and look at it. So like how people just like super fast like just go about the freaking keys and stuff. I'm like All right, that's F A C E. No, yep. that, that's exactly <laughs> how I have to do this stuff too. I'm like, re- that's that. Yeah, somebody needs to make these staffs bigger so I can see them. No, I don't. <laughs> I can't see if it's on the line or not. No, but like some of that comes down to the comfortability of doing it or having done it a bazillion times before. Because mm-hmm. like, I played the trumpet growing up, and they they weren't just like, you know, hold down this thing and make a honk like this, and that's an F note, you know, and yeah, and true. you had to read it on a sheet of music, yeah. so like. I figured out how to do that. So I could like, to this day, which is the weirdest thing ever, I can still like sight read music and play it on a trumpet. Like, Uh, it's just like, here's this marching band song. Here's this pet band song. Awesome. I I, wish I could do that. You know, I haven't done it in like 15 years. I don't know how it's applicable to anything, but like. Do trumpet. I'm not, you know, I'm not, (laughs) not like great at it. But the other end of that is this, like, I, because that is the only thing I've ever done on it and leaned on, I can't really like improv on a trumpet at all. And I understand. Oh, no. And so, like, I understand where, like, like if I could like figure out a scale, I could be like, these are the notes I need to hit, so I could yeah. I could do it. But like on a, on a guitar, on a guitar, someone's like, we're in A flat minor, and it's just like, wham, here you go, just dump it out, and it's like instantly, don't have to think about it, just there it is. But like on a trumpet, I would have to be like, A flat minor okay they go, <laughs> go up a full step and we're going up a half step then i would have to like think about it so much i wouldn't be able to just do it and that's the one thing i think is weird that the guitar i think like bypasses a lot of the things like that on a piano mm-hmm. where you're like uh this is this chord you know but if you were in a different key and you tried to play like that it might be a minor or something yeah. and you know and then yeah. it's like well this or on a flat, you know, it would be on a flat anyways. And it's like, how many of the black and white keys do I need to hit now sometimes? Because I don't, I don't know. You could, because you could just stay on the white keys and make the one, three, five, you know, the first one, the third one, and the fifth one and make the major chords the whole way up and it would sound okay, but it lacks depth of any sort. Yeah. That's, that's what the one thing I think about piano is it doesn't lend itself to that. Maybe it, maybe some of it has to do with the fact that I've played enough guitar that I'm comfortable enough to, to improv while doing it, but, um, 
you know, it is a different beast to be able to just go out on something and fart around and be like, what are you doing? That sounds cool. It's like, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. I don't. That is, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if vocals lend themselves to that because otherwise you'd just be like walking around like scat singing like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah um yeah uh, yeah yeah, nailed it but uh do you ever like uh find yourself singing in your car like by yourself maybe even if a song's not on the radio if you're just like cruising down the road it's just like man i want to hear this song it's not on the radio i'll just sing it whatever do you you know no i just play it and i just jam out okay you don't ever just like not just to myself no just walk around and sing and just to like um like if i go on walks and stuff like in the woods or something Mm -hmm. i'll just sing because mm-hmm. music doesn't work down there. Or like, uh, I don't get signal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, otherwise, no, I just, I always have music. So you only sing in the woods where there's like creepy, it's like Hall- Halloween's well, it's, past, unfortunately. Well, it's but daytime. it's daytime. You're just like, ooh. No, like, yes. <laughs> I haunt anyone that's down there. <laughs> I no. wait for the trespassers. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that's probably the unfortunate thing about singing, though, is like it's it is so much an instrument, but it's like your body is an instrument, but you don't have the ability to just go out there and noodle around and kind of just make stuff up. Um, I mean, even if you yeah. like, even if you like wrote your own poems, mm-hmm. you could be like, well, it's kind of go something maybe a little bit like this or whatever, you know, yeah. and uh, but you can't really go out there and be like, this is how the song goes and this is how the words go. These are all the notes the words are in. Uh, make all the other stuff behind it. Like, it's kind of like a, a yeah. reverse aspect of how yeah. a lot of people make music. Yeah, and I don't, yeah, I don't noodle around very often. <laughs> <laughs> but if if I learn a song and I know the song really well, then I start, I guess, playing with it. Like, what kind of runs I can do or or what harmonies would this be? And Ooh. Blah, blah, blah. That's a cool thing. Um. I love harmonies. I think having any sort of like even like the most basic harmonies uh, adds like the most insane amount of depth to a song. If two people can harmonize even a tiny bit. Makes a big difference. Makes a huge difference. (laughs) And then that's another thing to me where it's like I can't sing really in the first place. So I'm not going to be hitting any harmonies. If if I'm singing something you think you can hit a harmony with whatever the (laughs) heck I'm doing, knock yourself out. But like I'm not going to be the person adding any harmonies to anything. So when I you know hear and see people doing that uh you know like chris car band you know they got oh yeah four, oh, 400 people in the band that could sing They're you know so every one of them ship are, shape yep super tight very harmonies. good very good dudes all of them and it's insane dudes. just i just i just you know it almost bothers me they're so good it's just like this is insane but how are you doing this the how thing do you... is it's it's a lot of practice i'm sure it is because like, i'm because, I mean, you can be, like, a natural at it, but to, like, figure out all four harmonies or, you know, whatever, how many are singing, it's it takes a lot of practice to be as, like, tight as they are. Yeah. Because it's so good. Ugh. Yeah. They're, like, it's almost like barbershop quartet yeah. tight, like, singing. <laughs> they should just go acapella. Oh, they could do something crazy. <laughs> uh, I mean, they could do acoustic, but, you know, Scott probably wouldn't want to, you know, do uh, that because he doesn't. He could have, like, a triangle. Uh, <laughs> Scott, if you're listening, she said it, not me. No, no. Triangles are cool. <laughs> Triangles are cool. Um, that's that's something else I just think about is like the build, the ability to do harmonies and stuff. Were you doing that when you were young, when you were singing no. with your family or anything no. like that? Or <laughs> um, I didn't start singing harmonies until uh, like high school, basically. Or I don't know, maybe seventh grade because that's when my sister was in high school and mm-hmm. so they would work with harmonies a lot in high school choir mm-hmm. and um it it was a big like choir was kind of a big deal to whoever was in there like we took it pretty seriously and um so abby would come home and she would like sing with me and like she's like you sing this note and then she would work on our harmonies or whatever mm-hmm. so that's how i kind of got started with harmonies that's how i learned about them or like how i learned how to do them i yep. still know i i don't know what um notes are what like if you sing a a c i don't know what harmony that would be i would mm-hmm. just i'd have to hear it and then you just sing your part next yeah. to it yeah, yeah. That, i mean so that's like also really wild though too that like you can sing without reading music how did you get through school because i'm sure at school they like had music written out for you with notes and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, and you always had to grab it, and I I would always get in trouble because I would never grab my folder. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would, so when they would give us a new song, um, you would learn the song, 
and then um like I don't know so as we learn the song I just memorize the words and then when I learn the song I just never grab got blah never grab my folder after I knew the words cuz I didn't need it Yeah you just like listen to everyone else and be like oh this is how it goes Mhm That's yeah. I would like sit back the first time we went through it and then the second time I would just like ease in and then I would just get I would get there like, yeah. after like f- f- the fourth time mm-hmm. I'm like oh it's this way and then <laughs> I would just sing it I mean uh, to me, that's that seems kind of crazy, but while you were saying it, I was thinking to myself, like, it's no different than, like, if you just hear a song, even if you can't sing it in your head, you know you know how it goes. And if somebody, like, for some reason, just, like, uh, back when you had to play, like, cassette tapes, if it was playing a little slow, it would be a little bit lower. Yeah. And even if it was just, like, a tiny bit lower, you'd be like, that's not right. Yeah. That's not right. I mean, yeah. like, that's not the, those aren't the notes. And it's, like, it's so close, but it's not. And you're like, oh, this is just weird. This is this is off, you know. And like, you have to stop it. You can't do it. Yeah. And, I mean, like, you're not singing it, but in your head you're singing it. And you know where the notes are supposed mm-hmm. to be. And you're like, that's wrong. Like, that's, oof. That's rough. And I, had, I actually had a car that played cassettes <gasps> slower. Oh, no. And, like, it would play one side of a cassette about 30 seconds slower than it was supposed to. So yeah. it, it would add, like, six or seven seconds to every song. So every song would get, like... A little bit heavier and it made like some <laughs> albums like insanely cool to listen to and it like if you didn't if people didn't know you didn't know but there were some albums that that was the only way i listened to them actually really and then so then by the time i actually heard a digital version and like, like real oh, speed, what like, is this yeah like this is <laughs> this, this is, is too wrong. fast this is how, you <laughs> this know is not how it goes no this is not right this is not <laughs> how i remember it my brain <laughs> <laughs> so now i gotta go through and no i'm gonna make a digital version that's slower oh, I no i hate that but that is like something I guess I I didn't think about that. There are like concepts that you're speaking out here that I cannot perform that I can kind of understand though too. Like you said with uh, you can just hear the song a few times and kind of sing along with it with everyone else. And you're like, oh, this is my part and the people around me are singing these notes. So those are the notes I need to sing. And I heard it a few times and that's how it goes. And Exactly. And, that's how I got through school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is kind of, that is pretty much just learning though. Like that is one thing that makes uh, us as humans pretty good learning machines though, is the fact that like, there's a lot in music of just emulating what you think someone else is doing though. Um, if we talked to, I mean, I talked to a lot of guitarists and a lot of them learned in different ways. Some of us learned with tabs. Some of us learned with just open chords first. Some of some of us learned with like single notes, scales. I mean, you, you can go a billion different routes with this. But um, there's some people that when they learn, they would just like listen to stuff and try and emulate it. Or they would go somewhere and watch somebody play it mm. and try and redo that. So like that's the thing that like I would do at jam nights where it's like I'm playing something and I don't really know what this guy's doing. But I can tell based on where his fingers are. I can yeah. guess I can guess what he's like trying to get at, you know. So like you can kind of do some of that too with guitar. It's not necessarily like an unheard of concept though. Um I guess if you try and translate it to another to another area, the whole yeah. listening to somebody else and kind of watching them and by observation learning that, you know, that is I was watching something on TV once and they were talking about how that's like mostly a a human characteristic, which is what makes us like deeper psychologically was the fact that we can learn from other people by just observing hmm. them there's not a whole lot of that that goes on uh in the in the animal kingdom i guess <laughs> but not that that matters but i don't know um <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty crazy like have you thought to yourself like how how did you know what to do when you sat behind a drums did you watch people play drums and you're just like i'm just watching them like hit this thing this time or did you like just make noise with everything once and like these are the noises just make the noises when they're supposed to happen or like um actually i watched fairy a lot like uh-huh. when i first started hanging out with everyone i'd like watch him because i i think fairy's the best drummer i've heard but mm-hmm. i also really love the brutal republic music the really hard yep. heavy stuff yes and um so basically i would just watch him drum and then i got the basics of the the what is that a hi-hat yeah the hi-hat <laughs> okay. that's, that's the one that you stomp on and the two symbols squished yeah. together like sandwiches yeah that one and then the snare the snare that, yep. that's like your basics and then the bass or whatever and yep. then you take your little solo thing and yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just all about getting the beats right but yeah i basically just watched fairy and realized like what you had to do i'm i'm not the greatest at all but i get the gist of it and yeah so thanks fairy <laughs> <laughs> got her addicted to something here something fun <laughs> music no it's like cool though i think that's one of the best parts about going to jam nights though is the fact that like it is kind of just like an open invitation for people to just 
Oh, just for sure. Just go up there and do whatever you want to do. I mean, not all jam nights are, are built like that, but the one in Barnum that, yeah. that we attend sometimes is definitely like that. Yeah, it's very welcoming to any instrument you want to play. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't play an instrument, and you can you literally can just walk behind the drums. If there's no one up there, then it's your turn. Yeah. Like, if you want it to be. Yeah, exactly. You have a tambourine out in the audience. That's cool. Shake it. Yeah. Um. I mean, when Brad wasn't there, I... I brought a bass guitar. Oh my gosh, yeah, and you sat at the bar and played bass. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> well, I was playing bass all night. I get what Brad's saying. Like, you know, if he takes a break, no one else ever plays. I'm like, I get it now. Because if I'm the only one playing bass, almost no one ever plays. And then finally it was just like, you play bass. You play bass. And I'm just like telling like, you play bass, you know. And, you know, I, I would not, you know... I wouldn't think it'd be weird if you went up there and played bass even, you know, if it was just like, play these notes. Like, it's yeah, just I one of those simple it. songs. Exactly, yeah. I try it. That's the coolest and part. And no one, no one would scream or yell or <laughs> yeah. throw shit at you. Yeah, that's the best part. Cause well, we yeah, have, it's just I, Barnum. I think that's some of the reason I like going up there because it's a nice, comfortable friend group of people. For sure. And there have been a lot of people who have been up there and been like, I've never played a bass before. What do I do? And it's just like, play these notes or... Even somebody that's like, I played a guitar, but I've never played a bass. And it's like, oh, well, it's the same thing, just missing a couple strings. So if you know the notes, <laughs> yeah. it's the same thing. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that. And it's just like, yeah. And you're just like freely spreading knowledge to people, just allowing people to have fun and get in on the game. Yeah, there's been a lot more people coming up, too. Yeah. Um, which is awesome. I mean, we mentioned Jeremy er- earlier in the podcast. One of his students actually came up to the last jam night. and Oh, last week? Yeah. Oh, and, shoot. And, I don't think I went. No, I don't think you guys were there. Um, I didn't see you or him there, I don't think. Um, But yeah, he showed up and then like, it was just like, oh, play along with some of this stuff. We're playing like bluesy stuff. And he's just like, I've never done any of that. And it's just like, well, you know how to play something in E minor? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, here's a guitar. Just go go, go try it. No one's going to get mad at you, you know? And he did. He did great. You know, it was one of those things, obviously, like we were talking earlier, full of nerves at the beginning mm-hmm. just just plunking stuff out here and there and by the end of the songs it was just like, like a ton of fun yeah by the end of the song it was just like this is insane this kid's really good you know and yeah and he really was good i, f- I forgot his name unfortunately uh hopefully he shows back up tonight and i yeah re- tonight's jam night my note. yeah 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 i'm excited to go to jam it's so night. dark already ah oh, man yeah that daylight <laughs> savings time it just that's like the worst part is it's just such a bummer. It's like five o'clock. It's like, oh, well, it's already dark out. I thought it was like 10 for some reason. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. even make sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that was like crazy. I remember going to school with that stuff too, though. It's like, well, you go to school and it's dark out and you get home and it's dark out. Yeah. It's yep. just always That's dark. Normal. Yep. That's <laughs> normal gotta, winter. Gotta love the Midwest. We actually, let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, 57 minutes. Uh, uh. You were so worried about this podcast, about, like, what are we going to talk about? I mean, about you stopped stuff? at, like, a half hour. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I stopped with stuff I had written down, but it is it is easy to fill up the time, though, and talk to somebody about some of these topics, though, because, um, like, what you're saying is things that you felt, and they're not foreign feelings at all, because this, like, some of it was what I what I felt when mm-hmm. I first started doing some of those things, or, or how we feel about jam night and just going up there and... Just giving things a try and, and, and going with it. And, um, you know, to anyone listening, if you don't have an environment like that, you're more than welcome to uh, swing up to Barnum, Iowa on a Tuesday night to a jam night and, and jump in on the fun, you know, and hang For out. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of people I've had podcasts with around the area that show up to jam nights, and uh, we'd like to have you up there. And um, Carson gets up there and sings sometimes i wish you guys would get up there more but i also know that this is uh usually a busy day for um at least jeremy but sometimes you as well so yeah um it's we try to get up there we normally make it up there at like nine yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's it's just a little i mean it takes time it's and, a little bit late but and we get there and it's still sometimes it goes until midnight which is nice yeah those are the funnest ones yeah there's occasions where i have to even i have to clock out i'm like i gotta go and people are still playing and it yep. sucks because sometimes i'll bring i'll be one of the people that brings an amp or something it's yeah. like oh i have to take the fun away now and there's like oh, we got four acoustic guitars it doesn't matter oh, yeah. you know and it's like which is fine keeps going you know yep. any so, instrument yeah so uh if people uh want to catch any of your stuff online there's no like carson steve band page or anything like um, that so no but uh swing, can... swing out to a jam night maybe yeah jam night uh facebook sometimes i'm on jeremy's stuff yeah i guess yeah go to jeremy's shows i'll sing at jeremy's shows sometimes yeah check out the uh jeremy ober or brutal republic facebook For and sure. uh 
And uh, maybe catch Carson singing at a Jeremy show sometime. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, come to Jam Nights on Tuesday I, in Barnum. I think that's some of the funnest parts about it, though, too, is like the fact that you never know because you're always there, um, almost always at most of his shows. And you, just, you don't know if you're going to sing or not. And when you do, it's just like, oh, look at this. I didn't <laughs> know she was going to get up there and sing. Yeah, it's a nice surprise. Exactly. Exactly. I, most of the time, I never know either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, you're singing next song. It's like, what? 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 <laughs> like, not even next song. He's like, love. <laughs> okay <laughs> oh, yeah man. it's a lot of fun oh, that's super cool that's super cool all right yeah come out to a jam night or uh head to a jeremy over show and maybe you can hear carson uh sing some songs yeah all right <laughs> thanks for joining me i appreciate it yeah thank you for having me oh yeah there's a fun one that was a fun episode with a fun person carson steeb like i said she uh sings at shows we discussed that and i think that's one of the funnest things about her is if you go see Jeremy play, uh, you know, on a rare occasion, he'll just swing her up there and she'll sing her song or two with him. And that's really fun. I really enjoy that because you just never know what's going to happen. A lot of the people in that northern Iowa music scene are, are pretty chummy with one another. So they, they like to mix it up a little bit and kind of have everybody kind of jump in if they can. And it's one of my favorite parts about it. I like going up there and playing along with them. I think that's some of the benefit of so many of them going to the jam nights together and kind of learning each other's songs and playing along and, and trying things out and figuring out if it works. And then, hey, if everybody's at a show, why not? You know, so uh, hopefully you can check her out at a show sometime uh, like we talked about in the podcast. Uh, head to a Jeremy Ober show. That's kind of her frequent place if she's going to be singing at a show. But like we discussed, it's kind of a happenstance occasion. She she does it sometimes. Um, and when she does, it's really fun. It just comes out of nowhere. Um, but don't, don't expect it to be a thing that's going to be at every single show or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a Jeremy Ober show for sure, but, uh, sometimes she sings, sometimes, um, otherwise go to Jam Nights in Barnum, she's there, uh, you know, occasionally, and like, like we said before, she'll sing sometimes, so, uh, it's really kind of fun, it's really fun when, uh, everybody starts to switch up the instruments, and, you know, sometimes she plays drums, and, uh, we kind of got a running thing going with her, we want to try and make her sing and play the drums at the same time, so we'll see if that happens at a Jam Night sometime. Uh, i got to say thanks to Carson for sitting down and uh, entertaining us on the podcast for an hour. And, uh, you know, it was really fun. We were we were both kind of like, oh, yeah, I wonder, wonder what's going to happen with this, you know, because, I mean, she was she was pretty nervous. But it actually ended up being really fun. We uh, we covered an hour pretty well, and uh, I, had a, I had a fun time sitting down talking with her. So uh, thanks, Carson. Appreciate it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Thanks, everybody, for listening. i got to say thanks to Couchtown Coffee because every single week they fuel me up and get me going. I need to make another purchase, and uh, hey, that's just the way Couch Town goes. It's it's beautiful coffee, but it's it's not gonna last forever when you drink it every day like I do. So uh, gotta gotta make another order. Uh, hey, if you're making orders, uh, head to the Audible Farm shop and uh, check out stuff there. We've got uh, merch there. Uh, there's t-shirts. There's hoodies. There are also stickers and things of that nature. So hit up the shop if that's something that interests you. Otherwise, head to the YouTube channel. There's uh, video versions of this available on Patreon. If you want to see clips, they are free on the YouTube channel. The Patreon only costs $1 a month, and you get the video versions of this podcast. They come out a little bit earlier, too, usually a day or so earlier. Uh, I'm trying to make it earlier if I can, but it just kind of whenever I get around to it. So uh, about a day or so early, you, you can get a video version of this if you're on the Patreon page. And there's a handful of people that are doing it. So uh, thank you very much to everybody who's done the Patreon page, uh, as well as everybody who's purchased something from the shop. It really, really makes me smile when people do that. So I uh, appreciate it. It's not a prerequisite, though. You know why? Because the podcast is free. It's always going to be free. Uh, there might be a little bit of ads bookended on it, but it's going to be free, free forever. So uh, appreciate you guys listening each and every week. If you're new to this, scroll back through and find an older episode. You might find somebody you know. Uh, chances are, in fact, because I've talked to quite a few different people on the podcast, and uh, everybody's got their own story, and that's kind of why I'm here, is just to sit down and talk with people to get their stories. So appreciate it, and uh, we'll check you guys next week with another episode. Peace.